Hello guys and gals, so welcome back to another episode of Creepypastas. Yes, Creepypastas. Not really gaming ones today, but uh, just ones that are uh, standard about other topics. And uh, this one is called uh, Teeth.jpg, as you can tell by the title. So why not sit back, relax, and enjoy a Creepypasta about Teeth.jpg. I'd never been too fond of anyone at my local school. They were all a little too rude and boring for me. You see, I grew up in a small area with not many people interested in art like I am. So I had to venture off from home and find myself attending a pretty rural art school. It's sort of like a normal university except it's full of big-headed people. And the only reason why I'm here is because I've always wanted to be an illustrator. A children's book designer of sorts. I'd always taken keen interest in children's media and classic books such as the Arthur series. So when I was sent to live at this college, I was taken back when I realized a lot of the other art students here were all fine artists. You know the kind. The ones who like to splatter paint onto a canvas and claim it's art. I'm not really big on that sort of thing, but I didn't question it. I settled into the new place pretty quickly. I was sharing a dorm with a few other students. There was myself, a graphic designer named Josh, a film slash animator named Lily, and then there was one more guy called Daniel. Daniel is one of those fine artists I just described to you. His room was decorated with photographs of distorted women, and he always had weird music playing too. It was sort of like trippy 60s music. He also liked to smoke, so his room always smelled like an old ashtray. It was pretty gross. But he was a nice enough guy that we all got along pretty well. We soon became a tightly packed group of friends. It was the start of a new term for all of us, and we'd all come back from home after spending the summer there. We all unpacked our things and started thinking about what we had done over the summer. I went hiking with my stepdad. We went on one of those summer camps, replied Josh. I spent most of my time with my girlfriend. We watched films and went to watch him place too, Lily said. She spent a lot of time whining about messing and missing her sporty girlfriend. But we were glad they, you know, got some time together. I hadn't really done much worth mentioning myself. I did the usual stuff and went out to parties and went to trips with my family. Nothing really that special. It was, you know, I was just about to pipe up and speak when I got interrupted. I spent all my time at the dentist. We heard Daniel say. My father is a doctor of sorts. So, he let me come uh, with him sometime and explore the hospital. My favorite place to visit was the dentistry. I got to touch and feel teeth. It, it was cool. We all stared at him a bit confused. Were you even allowed to have random strangers go into a hospital rooms? Let alone play with the equipment? We didn't really care. We knew Daniel was that sort of guy anyways. He was known for getting into trouble for the sake of his art. There was always a there was always an excuse, I mean, the sake of his art. We all spent our first couple days getting to grips with our assignments. We all found out what we had to do. Naturally, I had to study some illustrators and just mimic their styles. Josh spent some money on his new Mac so he could do some design tests and Lily had to start playing around with the uh, claymation. It was, pretty, uh, it was a pretty nice vibe when we'd all, uh, you know, be at our dorms talking and giving ideas. Well, at least it was nice until Daniel would start insulting us. He'd never been the same since he came back from the summer break. He seemed more cold and distant. We assumed something must have happened to him over the break, so we decided not to press him on it. He never told us anything about this project. In fact, he never t even told us what the subject was. It was pretty normal for Daniel to be reserved, but never this much. At night, he'd just make himself some dinner and then shut himself in his room, crank up the music, and not be seen until the next morning. The rest of us would go out places, like go bowling or out to a local gig. Daniel used to happily tag along, but not anymore. One night myself, and, you know, Josh had gone out for a long night, Lily didn't come with us. She said she wanted to see if Daniel was okay, since he hadn't been talking to us for a few days now. We could see her point and complied. She had spent the uh, evening knocking on his door and trying to get him to speak with her. Just before we left, we saw his door open and Lily step inside. The floor was locked again. Brushing it off, we head outside. We'd gone to see a movie, and then go out for a few innocent drinks. It was fun, but we didn't get home until around uh, 2 in the morning. When we got back, Josh just said uh, goodnight and went straight to bed. I hadn't gone to bed yet. I was fucking hungry. Drinking always made me hungry, so I raided our fridge and found some cold pizza from the night before. I was going to go back to my room when I realized something I didn't notice before. Daniel wasn't in his room, and Lily wasn't in hers. Due to Daniel's strange new behavior of locking himself in his room until early hours, and Lily never, you know going anywhere without texting us. This is pretty weird. I went over to his door and gave it a knock to see if, uh, you know. And sure enough, the door just opened right up. It wasn't locked or anything. I just assumed he and her had gone out with some of his Ponzi art friends. But it wasn't like Daniel to leave his door open like this. 
It always been a you know I'd always been a nosy son of a bitch, so I step inside and see if there's any signs that they'd gone somewhere. His keys were gone, his jacket was gone too, but you know he'd left his wallet on his desk. The other thing that was odd was that he'd left his laptop on his bed and it was still on. The screen was still lit up. Cur curiosity got the best of me. Perhaps this could be my chance to find out what this art project he'd been talking about, you know, was hiding. I mean, Daniel was a fine artist, so it could have been anything. I noticed that he had a USB plugged in and two files on the screen. One was called Dentist Photos, and the other one was called a singular image named Teeth.jpg. I clicked on a Dentist Photos file, and there were just uh, pictures of people's teeth and plastic models of teeth. It was nothing interesting, so I clicked back off the file and decided to check out Teeth.jpg. That image would be forever burning in my brain, though. It startled me so bad that I slammed the laptop shut, shaking. As I sat back, I wasn't sure I wanted to lift the screen again. I knew I had to, or Daniel would know someone touched his laptop. I lifted the screen again and, you know, staring back at the image for a brief moment before clicking it away from it nervously. I then made a decision. I decided to show this to Josh and Lily in the morning. This was seriously messed up. I knew that Daniel was an artistic kind of guy, but this was just insane. I quickly bolted it back to my own room, scoured for my USB drive, and eventually found it and darted it back to Daniel's laptop, where I copied the image onto my flash drive. I stared at the image for a little while longer. I was trying to dismiss the image as a mere photo manipulation, but it was just something so wrong about it. Perhaps it was his black soulless eyes, or the fact that whoever or whatever this creature was was putting up its mouth in such a weird and disturbing way. It almost looked forced, like whoever this creature was was forced to pose in this way. I, I, I shook it off as a mere thought and fixed up the laptop so it didn't look tampered with before I went back to my own room. Soon enough, I heard you know, a front door open and the sound of footsteps, then Daniel's door locking. Daniel was home, and there was no signs of Lily. The next morning, I waited until Daniel had gone out of uh, one of his you know, one of his lectures, and since it was a Friday, Josh and I had the morning off. I decided now would be a good time to show Josh that image. I asked him if he wanted to see what Daniel had been hiding from us, and, you know, he'd confusedly but also eagerly said yes. I brought my laptop out into the living room and loaded up my flash drive, opened the image for both of us to see, and... Josh's expression just fell into shock before he sputtered. What the fuck is that thing? I could tell just by his reaction that both of us were thinking the same thing. This couldn't have been an art project image. There was no way that this would pass as a fine art piece. Would it? I mean, sure, art can be creepy at times, but I can't imagine his teachers would appreciate such a creepy and disturbing image. I know that Daniel can be a creepy son of a bitch, but that isn't right. We've got to show Lily that... We both cut off one another. We briefly paused before looking at one another with confusion. Where was Lily? I realized that you hadn't come back with Daniel last night, and neither of us had seen her that morning. When I explained to Josh what I did last night, he began to worry. Lily was never the kind to just sneak off and not tell anyone. I picked up my phone and began to ring her mobile. For a while, there was no there was silence. Then, just from Lily's room, we heard a faint buzzing sound. Just Josh got up and walked into Lily's room rather quickly. He had never been one to go into girls' rooms, and came back out holding Lily's phone in his hand. With a worried look on his face, Lily was gone, and we had no way to get a hold of her. Maybe she's just gone to a lecture and forgot her phone. I stuttered. Josh shook his head, chewing on his lip out of nerve. No, Lily doesn't have lectures on Friday, remember? She'd normally at least say hello to us and take her phone. You know she lives on that thing. She never stops texting her girlfriend. He was right. Lily's life revolved around her phone, so we knew there had to be no way she'd leave it. Suddenly her phone lit up. Someone was calling for her. We both looked at the phone and looked back at one, at one another, before Josh paused to pass the phone to me. I brought her up to my ear before speaking. Hello? On the other end of the line, I realized it was her girlfriend that was calling. I recognized her husky voice. Ah, Lily, you there? Thank God you're okay. You didn't text me at all last night or this morning. I thought something was wrong. I cringed a little bit, realizing I had to break it to her that I wasn't Lily. And as I spoke, I heard her girlfriend begin to get upset. Her breathing quite heavily, and I could hear the sniffling sound someone makes when they cry. I felt bad for her. But perhaps she could have been my chance to find out anything I could about Lily. Wh where is Lily? She hadn't spoken to me since last night. I, I thought she was just playing a joke on me, but now I, I don't know. I looked at Josh with a confused stare, and as he began to pace around a little bit, I put the phone on a loudspeaker and asked her, Why do you think Lily was playing a joke on you? Did she say anything odd? Yes, her girlfriend replied. She went 
me, she went one message. She sent me one around 1.30 in the a.m. I looked at Josh baffled before I asked again. What did the message say? Help me. I looked at Josh with wide and worried eyes. Lily would never pull a prank like that on anyone, let alone her own girlfriend. She always told us how worried she'd be about her girlfriend getting paranoid, so we knew she wouldn't send a message like that unless she had a reason. I continued to speak with her girlfriend, but I was getting nowhere, so I reassured her that we would, you know, find where Lily was and, you know, we'd have her calling her back tonight. Her girlfriend seemed suspicious, but just agreed and put the phone down. Myself and Josh placed back and forth. We had no idea what this could mean. Why would Lily send a message like that? We continued to think for a while, and decided that until we knew where Lily was, we were going to skip our lectures. We spent a long time thinking over things, and began to write down the connections we could make. Afterwards, Josh read out the list to me, so we could think them over. First, Lily goes to Daniel's room, at around, you know, 10pm. She's locked in his room. Then we return home at around 2. During that time, at around 1.30am, we found out that Lily texts her girlfriend with a message saying, Help me. You discover that neither Lily or Daniel are home yet. Daniel's door is unlocked and his laptop is still left on. You find the image and then leave. You then return to your room and heard Daniel come home, but not Lily. Well, Lily is not back home yet, but Daniel is. What the hell could this all mean? I brought, I, I thought over for a while, and then came to a conclusion. I didn't want to make this connection, but this is the only connection I could salvage. Daniel did something to Lily. We have to confront Daniel tonight if Lily doesn't come home between now or tonight, okay? Josh looked shocked, but he agreed. Daniel would be our only chance of finding out what happened to Lily. So later that night, there were no signs of Lily. We knew that her girlfriend would be calling soon, so we decided to turn the phone off. We don't want to try and reassure her with false information. We waited until around 6 p.m. before Daniel finally came home. He looked rather startled to see us both standing there in the living room, and he tightly placed his art folder and satchel down against the sofa as we both stood up. Josh spoke to him, and I could tell he was trying to keep his composure. Daniel. We'd like to have a talk. It's uh, about Lily. Daniel's eyes uh, seemed to widen ever so slightly, but nothing I thought was worth thinking over. He tilted his head at us, looked confused as he asked us, Why? Something wrong? I shook my head. I didn't want him to uh, think we were accusing him of anything. We uh, we would never get to any, any answers out of him if we started up accusing him like that. Daniel seemed to look a little on edge, looking away from us as he itched his wrist under his baggy gray jumper. He pushed his dark gray black bangs out of his face and he spoke then what's wrong is she okay i mean i know she left her phone here last night so i supposed you know there won't be any way to get a hold of her we didn't say anything we weren't too sure on what to say to him how are we supposed to ask him if he didn't anything to lily without him taking offense i then realized something it took me a moment to realize before i spoke you just said she left her phone here last night right how'd you know that i could see josh's eyes light up he just realized the same thing I did. How on earth did Daniel know she'd left her phone before, you know, behind unless they went somewhere? We already acknowledged the fact that Lily never leaves her phone anywhere, so how on earth did uh, he know that before, you know, that uh, she had left it behind? Daniel didn't answer us. He was silent for a while before he pushed, uh, you know, past us and walked into his room, slamming the door shut. He walked over to his room, banging it harshly before he shouted, Leave me alone! I have course work to do. I'm sure Lily will show up tonight. Just stop being so paranoid. We just didn't know what to do. Daniel clearly knew way more than he let on. There was no way he, we were going to get that out of him. We walked back into the living room and slumped back down. I ran a hand through my hair. What the fuck was going on? I then realized that Daniel had left his bags on the sofa. He must have been too flustered to pick them up when he stormed into the room. I peered around at Daniel's door, hearing no sound of him leaving his room yet. I knew soon enough that he would come out to get his bags. In a moment of madness, I picked up the satchel, emptied its contents onto the coffee table. I could see Josh's eyes widen before he whispered to me frantically, what the hell are you doing? What if he sees you? I didn't care. I didn't know anything I could about Lily. She was a roommate and also my best friend. I couldn't just leave this to solve itself. I pushed through documents and came across what looked like a ticket. I crumpled it up and pushed it in my pocket. Then I found a zip-up document bag. I pushed it into Josh's hands and told him to go hide it. He complied and went to hide it in his room. I then quickly put all the other stuff back into Daniel's bag and rested it upright until it looked before. I then got up and walked into Josh's room. I watched Daniel go back to the living room to pick up his bags. Before he walked back to his room again, Josh grabbed the zip-up file from under the pillow as we both sat down on his bed. We didn't say anything, we just read the front cover of the file. Teeth. It sent chills up my smile. I knew that whatever was inside would have a connection to the image I saw on the computer, but what we saw was nothing we expected. 
It was just a series of photographs. The first photo was a picture of what looked like an abandoned room of sorts. The walls were covered in old floral wallpaper and the floor was just damp wood. It looked like it hadn't been used in years. Then the next photos were just pictures of tools and plastic tools and we noticed that tools were linked to dentistry. You know like needles and drills, so it was pretty creepy. But it was the next photos that made us both drain of color. It was just photos of Lily smiling. We looked through every single photo of Lily and in each one she had a big toothy smile. She was, she was such a sweet smile. One of her most distinctive features were her large front, you know, teeth. Just her left one though. We always found it cute. But now it was no laughing matter. We noticed that in the back of the photographs there were labels and each tooth in the photo was marked. There were notes on the photos that said things like remove or replace. It knocked Josh sick and I was more terrified now than ever. We knew that we couldn't confront Daniel about these photos, it'd get us nowhere. We just sat in silence for a long time, staring at the photos with disbelief. I then remembered the ticket I'd found and stuffed in my pocket. I reached into my pocket with a shaky hand and pulled it out. Bringing to my vision, it read, Group Ticket 2, Location, Station Road, Time, Date, 28th, 09, 2011, 11.34pm. We both looked at each other with firm gazes. That was just yesterday evening, we knew exactly what we had to do now, we had to find where Lily was. We never saw Daniel for the rest of the evening, and Josh had become incredibly paranoid. He asked if he could sleep in my room tonight, although I thought it was a bit awkward, I didn't mind. I mean, he was scared real bad, so I didn't want to leave him alone like that. When Josh was sleeping, I printed off the disturbing image for referencing, and then I had spent most of the night planning for the next day. I had already emailed our lectures, letting him uh, know that we weren't going to show up because we felt sick. And I checked how far away Station Road was. To my surprise, it was only an hour's drive away. So I figured we could take Josh's car up to Station Road and figure out the location where Daniel and Lily had been from there. The whole time I kept staring at the teeth.jpg image, a horrible thought crept into my mind. I didn't want to think about it, but it could have been a possibility. It was the person in the picture Lily? Every time I thought about it, I'd shake it off, telling myself I was just paranoid. But it would all add up. The timing, the photographs, it all makes sense. I don't want to believe it. And I certainly wasn't going to until we found Lily. The next morning, myself and Josh got up at around 6 a.m. We wanted to be out of the dorm before Daniel woke up, and we made sure to lock our own doors. We also decided to take Lily's phone with us. We didn't want to leave anything behind that would indicate we were suspicious. We left the dorm and got into Josh's car. I had brought along a small bag full of different things, such as photographs, a flashlight, a camera, and a notepad with a pen. We loaded ourselves onto a car and made our way towards Station Road. We were able to pinpoint it with my mobile GPS. When we got there, we found that we were in a rather abandoned looking area of town. The place was practically deserted. All we could see was tall, crumbling buildings with a little, you know, empty houses. We'd taken out the photo of the room and began to walk up to each little house. We pressed our faces to the glass to see if we could make out a floral wallpaper like the room in the photograph. We spent a good few hours doing this. Nothing. We were getting pretty angry at this point. We just wanted to get Lily back. Josh was so angry that he walked into one of the house walls, kicking it harshly as he shouted at the top of his lungs, Daniel, you sick bastard! Just as he kicked the wall one last time, he noticed the wall begin to tear, like paper. Josh looked down at his foot and realized that he had tore what looked like a piece of painted paper away from a stone wall. He then began to rip away the remaining pieces of paper, only to reveal that what looked like an outdoor basement. The doors were rustic and scratched but we noticed that the metallic handle was clean, as if it had been tampered with. Josh looked over his shoulder to me, and I gave him a nod. I quickly took a photo of the layout of the basement-like thing. Josh then walked down to the door and gave them a push, and to both of our surprises, the doors were simply blocked by a plank of wood, which Josh was able to push away with ease. We then pushed away the doors slowly and cautiously. Who knows what could be kept in there? It was obviously hidden for some reason. If only we knew what was coming. Perhaps it could have saved us from throwing up. As we stepped inside, we were met with a rancid odor. Neither of us knew what the smell was, but we both, you know, made it, uh, it both made us feel just instantly sick. Josh gagged and coughed, covering his face with his shirt. I swallowed back vomit as I continued to walk. I pulled out my flashlight and shined it inside the pitch black stone room. I continued to walk and we heard nothing. As we walked further into the room, the smell only thickened. It was getting so bad that Josh threw up behind me. He quickly composed himself and we stumbled back, you know, upright before we continued. As I looked around the room, my eyes met with something on the floor that made my heart race, and the flashlight dropped from my grasp. It was Lily's knitted sweater. It was a sweater she always wore when we went out for pizza or on bowling nights. It was the same gray sweater, with the same little torn threads on her sleeves where she would chew on. I could see Josh from the corner of my eyes, his eyes just as wide as mine, 
as all of the last of color drained from, her, from its face. I picked up the blood sweater slowly, holding it up in front of me, when I noticed that there was a large and thick blood stain, soaking up all the way through the jumper. I started... <clears throat> It started thick from the collar, and became thinner as it went down the sweater. It was I was now the one to throw up. I collapsed on my knees, puking heavily. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what to think. I soon maintained myself and stood up again, holding the flashlight as I put the sweater in my bag. Through blurred, teary eyes I pressed on. I found nothing from where I was standing, and heard a small light, you know, switch flicker on from behind me as a red light filled the corner of the room, and then I heard him. Josh screamed louder than anything I'd ever, bef you know, heard before. My stomach was in knots as I shined my light to where he was standing. He was standing over a large black table. I watched him just stand there in complete terror as if he was frozen. I could only imagine what he was looking at, and I truly wished I left it to my imagination. I walked over to his side and then I laid my eyes on the sight before me. It was Lily. She was strapped down onto a table wearing nothing but her jeans. Her body was covered in thick layers of tape, keeping her strapped down. One of her arms dangled down to one of her sides. But the other arm was nowhere to be seen, and her replacement was just a taped up stub with stains of blood under it. I could hardly breathe. My stomach was now so knotted and my breathing so tight that all I could do was stare. I looked up at Lily's face, her head had been forced back, and we could see that her innocent blue eyes had been violently gouged, gouged out. And her replacement was thick black wax that filled up the empty eye sockets. Her nose had been contorted and broken, snapped in many places, but the worst part of it all was her mouth. Her jaw had been forced open and we could see her mouth had also been filled with the same black wax. Her teeth had been ripped out and misplaced in all different directions. I then noticed how her mouth had been stretched upright, her cheek tearing to reveal more teeth that she had been, that had been pulled from her mouth. It gave her a contorted, horrible smile. Her face was covered in streams of her own dried up blood. I stared at the hands that were holding the mouth open. It was her own, her own hand that had been stitched to her ripped cheek. The flesh was torn and falling apart under her nails. Her nails were cracked and chipped, with staples and little threads holding the hands in places. The red fluorescent light created horrific shadows and highlighted every grotesque feature that now was on Lily's face. I silently and numbly pulled out the picture of T.J.Peck and stared at it. Then back to the real thing, they were identical. Josh brought a shaky hand over Lily's cheek, before he collapsed by the side of the table. I could hear him sobbing horrendously by her side, before he passed out beside me. I too felt like I was on the brink of collapsing. But then something caught my attention. I could feel the presence of something, something coming into the room. Someone else? I'd already started to get an idea of who it was. And I knew now there was nothing we could do about it. I heard the door slam shut and the plank of wood being placed, placed over the door. I heard a sound of footsteps. I heard them inch closer and closer until I could feel their presence behind me. I knew he was here. And I knew that there was no way out. I could hear their voice speak very faintly behind me. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but it's okay. It's all for the sake of art. But that wasn't what made me collapse. I knew well enough from here that my fate was sealed, but after we finished speaking, I heard one more tiny sound that made my heart both ache and my tears only stream further down my numb cheeks before my vision faded away from me and my friends. You know, my hands had slipped away from the table. I could hear the sound of Lily choking. Okay, that was one of the uh, lengthier pastas we've done, and as a whole, it's really nice. The whole tale felt like it flowed smoothly, and sure was a little overly detailed at some points. For example, some of the mentions on what was worn, or hell, even the hair bangs, which was a little too much, but that's not the point. Because as a whole, this creepy pasta works properly. The concept was that of a serial killer, someone who's mentally disturbed, performing their sick experiments on reality, which isn't new at all, really, but the way it's handled here is really well done. Since the build-up was exceptionally great with Daniel and the little backstory properly paced and peppered in and introduced so we sort of build up a relation to some of these characters and we understand they're not just you know creepypasta characters they, they they are believable hell even me as a fine arts major as well you know if someone feels closer that's a whole different story right there the tale itself delves into Daniel and as we saw and how Lily has disappeared but you know Daniel is obviously playing the strings in the back but a crucial issue here is not in the writing but the picture that is shown you probably have seen it in the video if you're watching it you know, if you were looking at the video, not just listening to the audio, the picture that was displayed, and if you don't know what it is, click the link in the description below for the creepy pasta. Is a woman, obviously, and if we look at it right here, 
you can easily tell that is Lily <laughs> three quarters of the way into the creative past of you know being missing you see the picture that you already begin to piece it in you, once you see it earlier on this is an issue since it really plays against that build-up but it's not a point against the writing itself if we didn't really see that the effect would be the effect would be much greater if we hadn't have seen that picture this would have honestly you know gotten to me you know I would have been like oh nice you know but it didn't anyways as a whole, I quite enjoyed it, and I, I do like the story. It was a standard serial killerish tale, but it was executed beautifully to the point it really makes me feel creeped out reading it late at night. It's something that you can see really happening, which is unfortunate, but that's what makes it creepy, when you sort of picture it possibly even happening. In the end, what would you change it, and what would you rate this creepypasta? This has been another episode of Creepypastas. <laughs> and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.